we welcome everyone to this morning service on the last sunday of the month of august reading from psalm 47 verses 1 and 2 oh clap your hands all you peoples shout to god with the voice of triumph for the lord most high is awesome he is a great king over all the earth what a great god we have and what a joy it is to worship god wherever you are all you have to do is say lord jesus i offer my praises to you shall we close our eyes and look to god loving gracious god you are awesome wonderful glorious majestic sovereign almighty there is none like you o lord neither on earth nor in all of creation because you are the god of creation you created us you have created this new day we thank you lord that this morning we could lift our voices to sing the praises of our great god be enthroned because you are the lord of the church you are the head of the church you are the groom of this bride we pray o lord that this morning through the songs we sing and the prayers and the word we receive we would offer our lives to you in worship and we would be encouraged and enriched lord with your presence to you alone be all the glory honor and praise in jesus name we pray amen we welcome pastor paul and his family as they lead us in praise and worship What a lovely day today isn't it God's love is amazing for all of us through all of what has happened he has held us in the palm of his hands some 103 talks about his love how his love does not deal with us harshly how his love is as great as the height of the heavens from the earth how our sins have been kept far away as far as east is from the west because of god's love for us join with us as we sing of this love my jesus i love thee i know thou art mine i love you jesus because you have first loved me what great love jesus has for us let's sing let's celebrate this love let's proclaim of this love and find our shelter under this huge magnificent loving god
Sometimes we fear we don't experience this love. God's response to Job and Job's worries, trials and problems in Job 38 is found in the greatness of God, in the magnificent works of God, creation of God. Our greatest fears and challenges fade away when we notice this magnificent God who is with us, who's around us. How many times does your heart beat in a minute? And how many times have you been in control of that? Yet, we fret so much when God is in control. He marks the ebb and the flow of the waves. He appoints the sun to come up and go down. Indescribable, uncontainable God. Amazing God. We are going to sing and give him praise this morning. May your fears, may your worries, as you join along with us, be informed to quieten themselves down, to know that we have a God who is bigger than all of that we know and even things we do not know. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing Us that we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Who has told every lightning bolt where we should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and gave source to its light Yet conceals it by bringing the coolness of night None can fathom Indescribable, uncontainable You place your stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable All struck me forth to our knees as we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God Incomparable, unchangeable You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same You are amazing God You are amazing God. We thank you, Lord. You are an amazing God. Help us, O oh Lord, to know and experience this sovereign care, this magnificent love. You're all we need, and our identity, our fears, our challenges become silent and quiet in your presence. Our lives are at its full capacity when we are at the center of your will. Teach us, O oh Lord, to make our hearts thirst your presence. Teach us, O oh Lord, to make you 
all that we need, all that we want. Would you take this time to make this last song our prayer? You're all I need. You're all I want. Help me to know you are here. Dear loving Heavenly Father, what a privilege, what a gift it is to call you Father. To know 
that our worldly examples may fail, but in you we find complete satisfaction. Good examples, we thank you, Lord. This morning, we remember the words of the psalmist in Psalm 105. He remembers his covenants forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. You are a God who keeps covenants with us. Father, you came seeking us. You sent your only son to redeem each one of us. We are so gifted to have this love. and We've declared in praising you for this love, how much we love you, Jesus. My Jesus, I love thee. And this time, O oh Lord, now, we want to renew our covenant with you. Our part in this covenant, we want to say thank you. So many times, our lives are enamored with so many things that are happening with us, O oh Lord. We fail to choose to look up to you and to know that you are our big father who is leading us forward. We want to thank you for this covenantal love that you have for each one of us. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, for your work in us. And we pray that and ask for forgiveness. That many times we do not take time to even identify your voice in our lives. To know that you are present in and through us. Lord, we remember this morning that you put so much around us to know you. We just sang of it, O oh Lord, indescribable, uncontainable. You are God who has just put yourself out there so we cannot miss you any point in law. So, Lord, we pray that you would forgive our feet running far away from your ways, from our eyes not seeing you, refusing to see you from our minds refusing to give you the ownership, the sovereign seat of our heart. We bring before you, O oh Lord, and we thank you for this covenant. And we pray that many times we've failed, we've wronged, and how much each of us are gifted because of your son Jesus and what he did on the cross. I pray, O oh Father, this morning, even as we sang of your praise and worship, even as we are about to listen to your word, as we pray, as we fellowship with one another right from our homes, Father, we pray that you would keep us far away from doing things our own way. We want to come to you for who you are in the way you want us to and do things that please you in the way you are asking us to, O Lord. Keep us far away so we would be running far away from you. We want to come back to you. You're all we want, O oh Lord. You're all we ever needed. Teach us, O oh Lord, that with you, you would give us the strength and the grace to handle our lives' challenges. We bring before you all of those challenges. We bring before you how vulnerable we are. We bring before you the many people who have wronged us and how we hold them in our hearts. Teach us, O oh Lord, that we would reflect this covenant that you've loved us with. My Jesus, I love thee, and I want to love others the way you love me. I don't want to be selfish, O oh Lord. Teach me. This morning, too, we confess that we are frail, we are weak, and many times we fail you, Mark, O oh Lord. And I pray that you would lead us, forgive us, cleanse us, reveal to us your mind so we can understand. Give us the courage to stand up and be your people, a holy nation. Throughout this service, refresh our souls, encourage our hearts, and renew our minds, O oh Lord. 
We ask all of this in and through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's listen to the announcements. Good morning. A warm welcome to everyone for this morning online service. Special word of greeting to those of you who are joining us for the first time. We are glad that you could be part of a service this morning. It's probable that you have visited our church in the past, but we are glad that you are here this morning and we welcome you to our service. I have some announcements and I'd ask you to carefully follow along with me. This evening we have the Sunday school as usual. That'll be at 4 p.m. through Zoom and there are many children participating. If there are still some children who would like to be part of this Sunday school, please do contact the number and the telephone number and the name which is listed here onto my left, and we will ensure that they are added to our Sunday class. We are getting close to the end of August, so we are entering into another new month. On Tuesday, the 1st of September, we will have our usual first day of the month service. This will be at 6.30 a.m. Tuesday, and it will be through YouTube. You will be provided with the links for the same. Next Sunday being the first Sunday in September, the 6th of September, it will be a communion service. Pastor will make announcements about the elements and preparation and the mode that we generally follow during the course of this service. This evening, we have a special service at 6.30 p.m., this will be a service aimed at the young adults of a church. It's called SALT. SALT actually is an acronym for Serve as a Living Testimony. The topic that we'll be covering during the service is look up, reach out, responding to crisis. All of us are in a crisis situation at this point in time on account of this pandemic. And this is a good time for us to be able to interact with each other and find out how is it that we as Christians, as a body of Christ can handle. That's the purpose of this service this evening. This is an interactive service. We'll have a time of praise and worship, and then we'll have a message by Ms. Pranitha Timothy. She's a senior consultant at Justice and Hope, and she's here with us today to also take us through this session, a Q&A session immediately following the service. There is a video to follow immediately after the announcement about this special service, so we would request you to watch that. And also make sure that you note this Zoom details, which is there on to my left, and that's a link you'll use to be able to join this meeting. We'd also ask you to register. The details, once again, are requested here in this pamphlet here on my left. Do register and follow the Zoom link to ensure that you're able to join this service this evening. The annual Bible quiz that has been scheduled for the 5th of September is almost upon us. This is for the seniors. And this is going to be at 11 a.m. on the 5th of September, which is a Saturday. As we have been announcing, we request all the members who have registered to take the test to be ready by 11 a.m. We'd also request those of you who are going to be taking the test offline to be here in the church at 11 a.m. Also, we have uh, some people who are registered to take this quiz in Tamil. So, such of those who are registered for Tamil, we do not once again request that you are here in the church by 11. This gives us time to ensure that everybody settles down and we'll start the quiz exactly at 11.30 a.m. The quiz as such is for one and a half hours duration, 90 minutes. And some of you have asked about the, the pattern which is a normal thing to ask before any exam. So we have 150 questions. This is actually an objective type question paper. So it's 150 questions made up of fill in the blanks, one word answers, true or false, and perhaps short phrases. We'd also like to inform that given the number of questions and the time, that you will have to quickly answer all the questions. You have just about 40, 45 seconds per question. So we would strongly advise that you try and complete all the questions without trying to refer, because there's no time to refer and 
answer these questions. What we are also planning to do is to bring out an uh, instruction sheet and send these out by Wednesday to all those of you who are registered so that the ground rules for this test, including the timings, etc., will be confirmed once again. We will be sending it to the email addresses which you have registered with us. In case those of you who are taking the test, please follow this carefully. In case you do not receive the instruction sheet by the evening of Wednesday, please do contact Rajan Paul, whose number is listed here onto my left, and ensure that your email is stands corrected because it will be to the same email ID that the question paper will be sent. The quiz for the juniors will be on the second Sunday as scheduled, and the quiz for the sub-juniors will be on the third Sunday. Further announcements about these other two, the junior and the sub-juniors, will be made during the course of next week and the following week as well. We'd like to wish all those of you who are taking the test all the very best to ensure that you are able to do well. Remember, the purpose is not so much the test itself, but the opportunity that each of us have had to study the Word of God. And so we trust that that aim and purpose is achieved. I'd like to remind the members about the Thanksgiving service that has been scheduled for the 27th of September. Remember, we have the information here on to my left, and we have also sent out the intimation with regard to this program. Typically, the members donate in kind, and they bring it to the church, and we distribute all the proceeds from the church at the end of the service with the help of the volunteers to the needy organizations. This time, we'll do it a little bit different. We are requesting the members to give us donations in cash, and we will go ahead and procure articles basically provisions, dry rations, for these organizations in relation to the headcount. We have a team of volunteers to help us out with that, and the distribution will happen on the 27th of September. We would like to identify a known provision shop to help us in this effort. And in terms of offering, we would like the congregation members to keep this 20th of September as a deadline. And all of these details are listed here on to my left. If you have any questions, you can always call up the church office. The office is open during the day, all through the week. So if you have questions on how you can help, we would invite your questions and we'll be glad to clarify. We have been requesting the members to register on our website. The reason is that we have a number of programs during the course of the week and for the following month as well. So it will be helpful if you have a hard copy of our programs in PDF format with you. Now, when you register, there is a procedure to be followed. I know that you provide the email IDs, you provide the telephone numbers along with your names. What we would also request you is that you can see a telephone number here. It's important that you save this number to your WhatsApp. If you do not save, you will not be able to get the broadcast message on your WhatsApp. That's a procedure that you need to adopt. So please ensure that you take a look at this number. I can read out the number for you. It is, it's 93613-07288. So that's a number which is here on the screen. Please ensure that you save this number in your WhatsApp contact, and then you'll be able to get these messages. I'd like to thank the congregation members for your donations, tithes, and offerings. We are glad that you've been supporting the church every week, and we look forward to your continued support as we move forward through these difficult times. And again, for those of you who are willing to make contributions to the Thanksgiving, you can use the same bank accounts that are shown on to my left, and you can also use the QR code for ease of access to our Access Bank account. Now, here too, we would ask you to send an SMS to the number of our accountant that we have shown here so that we are able to account the purpose for which you are making these donations. That will be very helpful for us in accounting according to your preference. I'd like to congratulate those of you who are celebrating your birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. We pray for God's blessings on each of you and your families. We also pray that you would have another year ahead that is fruitful and a blessing for you and your families. 
We regret to announce the passing away of Mrs. Lynette Jairaj. She passed away on the 26th of August and the funeral was held at our church cemetery on the same evening. We request you to remember the brief family in your prayers. Thank you and God bless. Well, we've been hearing the announcement for Bible quiz for many, many weeks now, and it's just round the corner. I was speaking to a person just last week who said, I was not sure whether I should write the quiz at this age. And I told him, well, this would be a great opportunity to get this off your bucket list. Well, why don't you write the quiz? Why don't you make an attempt? Because this is not about winning. This is about enriching ourselves with the knowledge of God's word. So please do register, please do participate and enjoy uh, studying God's word even through the quiz. Now the salt service is there this evening. I hope many can join and be blessed by participating in the service. There's so many things happening in the life of the church. The Sunday school and uh, we encourage you to pray and participate. One more word and then I'm going to pray. Please do give generously for the thanksgiving. There are many organizations who look to us to provide. And we look to God to provide. And it's our prayer that he will speak into your hearts. I've given mine. Why don't you give yours? That we will be a blessing. The joy of this is that we never know who will receive. They will never know who gives but God is glorified in all. So please make time to give generously toward our thanksgiving. It will be distributed by the end of September. Why don't we pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. Would you close your eyes and let us look to God in prayer. Gracious loving God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have kept us as your stewards, as your ambassadors. And Lord, the life on earth has a purpose, a meaning. And Lord, it will only have all of that when you are the shepherd of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for our brothers and sisters who are walking into a new day, new year. Lord, this day and this week, we thank you, Master, 
for all your goodness over the past years even protecting them and guiding them as they walk into a new year we pray that this new year would be joyful peaceful and fruitful we pray O oh lord that you will fulfill the desires of the heart and may their number one desire be to love and follow jesus as a church we pray for them and as your minister i bless them in the name of jesus lord we pray that you would continue to watch over us and guide us even as we wait upon your word this morning we love you we praise you in jesus name we pray amen before we listen to god's word let us join the choir as we sing the song turn your eyes upon jesus Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 25 to 34. Acts, chapter 16, verses 25 to 34. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, 
supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Here ends the Bible reading. Thanks be to God. What a joy it is this Sunday morning to stand in the house of God as the ambassador of God to minister God's word that all of us are earnestly waiting to listen. What time it is? It is manna time. The Holy Spirit never disappoints us. And uh, it's my joy to bring God's word to you wherever you are. All God is interested in is would you listen carefully, willingly and when God's word tugs your heart, please do not dismiss it. Would you close your eyes? Let us look to God in prayer. Gracious, loving God, we thank and praise you for this joyous Sunday morning that we, O oh Lord, as the family of God, as creation of God, as children of God, have come to listen to the voice of God. Blessed Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. So speak to our hearts, O oh Lord. We need to be pruned. We need to be encouraged. We want, Lord, your manna to feed our souls. And so, Lord, we look to you for truth this morning. Truth that will set us free. We love you. We praise you. Blessed Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Today, every day, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are so many things happening around us, even as we go day after day, week after week, and now we have come, come to the last Sunday of August. Who would have thought that this year, 2020, would go this way? There's so much of pain, so many problems, so much of this pandemic. But in all this, the Lord says, He still has drawn you in the palm of His hands. He is still mindful of you and me. Now before, we sing, before uh, getting into God's word, shall we read or rather say the verse of the month. Uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 8. Matthew 3, 8. It's six words and we learned it by heart by the time we have come to the fifth Sunday. So six words. Can we say it together? Matthew 3, 8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Now this morning, we're going to conclude this topic of the study on repentance by looking at this very important aspect as I've titled this morning's uh, uh, devotion, One Step Away. One Step Away. Remember, life is not measured, you know, collectively. It is one step step at a time that we take and it eventually takes us to a particular destination and the destination is determined based on what steps you took every day because we may see, some may seem insignificant but you would make some crucial decisions some 
pivotal decisions some irreplaceable decisions so, some decisions that may cause regrets some decisions that may cause you to rejoice life is all about one step at a time one step at a time judas is carried he was one step away from repentance he hardened his heart went after money lost his soul cain was one step away from letting go of the anger against the brother and asking god for forgiveness yet he hardened his heart he anger grew to become hatred hatred manifested in action and he lost his brother by killing his brother one step away samson was one step away from ruining an already ruined life he is a blind slave chained to the pillars of a pagan temple but he took that one step of repentance history records that samson was a man of faith his name is found in the book of hebrews chapter 11 where is your life how are you living this morning listen very carefully because we are going to talk about this topic you are one step away from making the greatest best decision in your life or you are one step away from ruining what all that god has shaped and blessed you with you would never know you and i never know how great our decisions are how important our decisions are because the evil one constantly will say it's nothing take it carelessly god always says be careful be careful be careful the bible warns be careful with what you think the bible warns be careful with what you see the bible warns be careful with what you speak the bible warns us be careful with what kind of company you are with the bible warns us be careful about the life partner you choose the bible warns about leaving your wife and going after adultery the bible warns about the steps we take in life you heard the bible reading so i'm sure your bible is already turned to the book of acts chapter 16 and this very familiar passage book of acts chapter 16 verses 25 to 34 acts 16 verses 25 to 34 god is giving us five lessons today it will be t and w there are five lessons that you and i need to pay attention god the lessons would come on the screen in the bottom and i hope many of you are right sitting with your notebook and a pen and writing down these notes so that you can reflect on these lessons because this is god speaking to you and to me lesson number 1 lesson number 1 treasure the word of god treasure the word of god let us come to the passage and let me refresh our memory of the context of this passage of book of acts paul and silas are thrown into a prison as criminals but not for any criminal activity they are thrown into prison because they preached the gospel it is happening in our nation even today people are persecuted thrown into prison harassed and beaten because they proclaim the name of jesus Paul and Silas are thrown into a prison and in the prison they cannot contain themselves from worshiping God listen very carefully to the statement if God is in a building you would want to go to the building to worship God if God is in your heart nobody can stop you from worshiping God is God Jesus Christ in your heart this morning If he is it doesn't matter where you are you will still worship God you will still enjoy his presence 
Paul and Silas are worshipping the Lord. Look at what it says in verse 25. I am reading Acts 16, 25. But at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. The prisoners were listening to them. The prisoners were listening. But there was another person who was also listening. Which is not explicitly mentioned here. But look at what is written in verse 30 let me read for you verses 20, uh, 27 onwards and the keeper of the prison awaking from sleep awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoners had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but Paul called with a loud voice saying do yourself no harm for we are all here then he called for a light ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas listen very 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 carefully to verse 30 and he brought them out and said this is the prison warden looking at two prisoners and calling them saying sirs what must I do to be saved what a question by a sleeping prison warden I'm fascinated with that because somewhere the praising and the singing of Paul and Silas had gone into his mind but because his heart was not tuned to God even in the listening his body went to sleep and he's not supposed to sleep because he's supposed to watch the prisoners in the night but he was sleeping but when he awakes and sees not only Paul and Silas but all the prisoners right there he is asking one of the greatest theological questions that one can ask sirs which means uh, you are not an ordinary criminal. You are not an ordinary human being. There is something supernatural about you. There is something exceptional about you. Does the world look at us and see that something exceptional is there with us? The prison warden is saying, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? An ordinary question would be, Paul and Silas, who are you man? He would have said, why didn't you run away? He could have asked umpteen number of questions. But the singular question that he asks is, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And that's where I get my first lesson. He treasured the word of God somewhere in the in the secret chambers of his mind and in his heart what he was listening when Paul and Silas were singing loudly settled in his heart and that is where the change begins to happen today many people are not willing to change because they are not paying attention when the word of God comes to them message time take your cell phone and start playing games Message time, that's the time to lean back on your sofa and snore. Message time is when your mind is wandering about many things. No, the first thing that the Lord wants you to do is treasure the word of God. You may not like the preacher, you may not like the pastor, you may not even like the sermon. But because it is the Bible, would you do me a favor? Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. I'm going to give you two verses for every point. Will you turn with me to the book of Job, chapter 23, verse 12. Book of Job, chapter 23, and let me read for us verse 12. I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. 
This is a wealthy man Job who says I had a lot of wealthy food I had a lot of variety of food I had all these things that I could enjoy But you know what was What gave me the greatest pleasure in life It is to treasure the word of God To treasure the word of God Treasuring the word of God Is something where when the word settles in you The word of God The holy Bible Has power to make transformation That you would otherwise not know You will never know what God wants to do And can do Unless the word of God Settles into your being Will you turn with me to Psalm 19 Verses 7 to 11 Psalm 19 verses 7 to 11 The law of the Lord is perfect Converting the soul The testimony of the Lord is sure Making wise the simple The statutes of the Lord are right Rejoicing the heart The commandment of the Lord is pure and lightening the eyes The fear of the Lord is clean Enduring forever The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous Altogether More to be desired are they than gold Yea than much fine gold Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb Moreover by them is your servant warned And in keeping them there is great reward A fool says in his heart There is no God It would be equally foolish To have the word of God come to you and you say, I don't want that. That's what many people are doing and will be doing in the last days. You are one step away from disregarding the word of God and making a fool of yourself. Or desiring the word of God and bringing God's presence into your life one step away. The jailer still had the power to take his knife and stab Paul and Silas. No questions would have been asked. It's still happening today. Injustice is happening in many parts of the world. One step away. The jailer takes that one step not to make a fool of himself. He takes that one step towards repentance. The first step, treasure the word of God. Number two, think about the ways of God. Think about the ways of God. Here, Paul and Silas have the opportunity to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to this jailer. When did this happen? When the jailer took the first step, to treasure the word of God And then the second step is Think In this man's career He would have met hundreds In fact thousands of prisoners What was different about Paul and Silas The man is thinking God has given us this beautiful capacity To think isn't that beautiful why the late uh, great apologist Dr. Ravi Zacharias titled or themed his ministry Let the thinkers believe and the believers think I always like that, uh, that caption Because it is something very important and pivotal That when you think about the ways of God When you ponder on the ways of God When you meditate on the word And the ways of God God will change the way You feel your attitude And your approach Because God can shape your thinking Psalm 139 verse 2 says He knows my thoughts from afar He knows my thoughts from afar Very very important What are you Thinking What are you thinking Once this man looks at Paul and Silas And he realizes my goodness They don't need help I need help His thinking is not 
towards destruction he is one step away from making his life and his family life radically different his thinking changed when will your thinking change when your mind is touched by god through the word of god when the holy spirit would put that into your mind put that into your mind you may have heard me speak about naaman a hundred times from this pulpit a man who was reckless a man who was haughty a man who was you know quick tempered he is walking away from prophet elisha and there on his way the servants tell him if the prophet had told you something very difficult would you have done it he is asking you to something do something very easy why don't you do it in that fraction of a moment he was one step away from walking back to his hometown as a leper and dying as a leper that one step his thinking changed he humbled himself obeyed god walked back walked home as the body of a child that's what the bible records what is your thinking this morning like what is your assumption about god what do you think about all that is happening do you say god is absent Do you feel God has forgotten? Do you feel like God is not, you know, it's not worthy to follow God? Think again, because it is very careful what you think in the secret chambers of your mind, because that is where Satan will come and try to steal your soul away from God. Instead of thinking of rebellion against God, why don't you think about repenting and following God? Because in that moment, you are one step away from greatness that you never know right now. one step away one step away very very important i can give you many many examples i'll give you one example and we'll go to bible verses when pilot had that opportunity to make one of the greatest decisions in world history he saw that jesus was without sin his wife comes and says do not do any, have anything to do with this man because he's a innocent man and i don't want you to get you know entangled in this matter but pilot was not willing to listen to anyone he was thinking oh my goodness if i don't yield to the crowd's desires then my job is at stake my career will be ruined so he is thinking crookedly instead of releasing jesus he is releasing barabbas washing his hands away and saying i have nothing to do with this man one step away what you think matters it not only matters to god it matters to you because if your thinking is submitted to god you can go somewhere somewhere great if your thinking is not and nobody will know you can be sitting right now with your family member you can be sitting right now with with a community of people who are worshiping god and your thinking can be dirty god knows that would you say lord i give the faculty of my mind to you offer your mind to god let me give you two verses book of joshua chapter 24 verse 15 book of joshua chapter 24 and let me read for you verse 15 and if it seems evil to you to serve the lord choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the amorites in whose land you dwell but as for me and my house we will serve the lord joshua makes it very clear his thought process is very clear he makes a choice and the choice was i choose god because god has chosen me 
I choose God's ways because God has chosen me. One more verse and I will move forward. Would you turn with me to Psalm 119 verse 30. Psalm 119 and let me read for you verse 30. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. Psalm 25 verse 30. 12 Psalm 25 verse 12 Who is the man that fears the Lord Him shall he teach In the way he chooses Number one Treasure the word of God Number two Think of the ways of God Number three Very very important This Philippian jailer Is listening to the greatest message Ever to, uh, for, that he has ever heard before then he makes that one decision one step away from a light, life transforming moment the third lesson trust in the wisdom of God treasure the word of God think of the ways of God number three trust in the wisdom of God he must have followed some uh, pagan worship he must have had his own uh, religious thinking but when he encounters Jesus uh, he is one step away from saying shh keep quiet or to say please keep talking I want to know more about Jesus where are you today every time the Lord tugs your heart are you saying shh or are you saying Lord please speak we all know this incident from 1 Samuel chapter 3 when Samuel runs to prophet Eli and he's saying did you call me? did you call me? and the third time the prophet says I did not call you but I know the one who is calling you the next time he calls you please do not sleep do not come to me he is willing to talk to you directly so when he calls you say speak Lord for your servant is listening that is the greatest singular advice that Samuel could hear. I wonder how many times uh, Prophet Eli was begging his sons to listen to the voice of God. But every time God would talk to Hophni and Phinehas, they would say, shh. Because they were smart boys. Smart enough to ruin their lives. Today there are many people who think they are so smart, they don't want God. Hophni and Phinehas are an example of how you can be so smart that your self-depending smartness can be the singular reason for ruining the God-given life. This man this Philippian jailer invites Paul and Silas to his house. A Roman inviting Jews, more importantly, a prisoner in I mean a, a prison warden inviting prisoners in the middle of the night to his house. Gives them all the things to clean themselves. He gives them a place to sit and eat. They are treated as guests of honor. What if others would come to know? This, at this point, listen very carefully. At this point in the prison warden's life, he doesn't bother, bother what others are thinking. He has found Jesus. And for him, that is the most exciting part. He must have spent many days and many nights in that prison. But this was not an ordinary night. This was the greatest night because thanks be to two prisoners, the warden is born again because he trusted in the wisdom of God. You are one step away from enjoying the goodness of God or one step away from resisting the provision of God. Let me give you one example and we will come to Bible verses. 
Luke's Gospel chapter 15 talks about that youngest son. He's sitting among the pigs, dirty, feeling worthless. With his own hands, he ruined a beautiful life. He was one step away from suicide. But the story goes that he took that one step to go and seek forgiveness. May I introduce, in case you have never heard, in case you have never fully grasped the magnitude of the mercy of God, doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what your life has been, you are one step away. Just come to Jesus and say, Lord, I repent and I want to tell you the best I know how. I can assure you, God will not kick you away. God will not send you away. He will embrace you. What about my past? You need to repent and say, I will never go there. Please forgive me. And the blood shed on the cross of Calvary will be put upon your soul. Your soul will be cleansed and you will be a child of God. Your past will be forgiven. Your past will be forgiven. He will never, never count it against you. That is what we read in Isaiah 53. He bore the, saw the, the, the punishment for our transgressions. You are one step away. This man took that one step to seek the forgiveness of God. The Bible records in Acts 16. He and his family accepted the Lord. Would you look at two verses in the book of Psalms again? Psalm 28 verse 7. My, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song I will praise him. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Trust is a very important word. Trust is to say, I will put aside everything else. I put my life on the line here. Who is better than God? That you put your life in his hands. He will never drop it down. He will treasure you. In the palm of his hands. Every child has gone through it. You are given something and saying. Okay keep it carefully. Don't drop it. Just that moment when somebody says. Don't drop it. Even if it is for 10 seconds. We will feel. Oh my goodness. I am going to drop it. The hand that never shook will start shaking. The mind that will never be feeling dizzy will suddenly feel dizzy. And you feel, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm going to drop it. Chances are we may drop. But when you put your life in the hands of God, He will never let you down. He will never let you down. Treasure the word of God. Think of the ways of God. Number th three, trust in the wisdom of God. Number four, one step away from transforming to the will of God. Isn't it beautiful what we read in Romans 8.28? For in all things God works together for good. Was Paul and Silas persecuted by accident? Were they persecuted by accident? No. Were they put in that prison by accident? No. Was that prison warden having duty that night by accident? No. Were Paul and Silas singing those songs by accident? No. Did the earthquake happen by accident? No. Everything was an incident. God ordains things in your life and my life to get our attention. He orchestrates everything so that in some ways 
you and i can be transformed to the will of god classic example is the life of jonah jonah gets into that boat going to that place with those fellow travelers kind hearted people they were not willing to throw jonah away the boat was not by chance the fellow passengers were not by chance the storm was not by chance the throwing away was not by chance certainly the fish was not by chance spitting him in that place was not by chance because in everything god wanted to get the attention of jonah and he got it this morning the lord is at work in your life and my life somewhere to get our attention drop everything and give your undivided attention to god you're one step away from realizing your true worth or you're one step away from feeling worthy or unworthy because of the things of the world do you to look at galatians chapter 2 verse 20 galatians 2 20 i have been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ lives in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me it is no longer i that liveth but christ who lives in me the man came to work thinking it's another night another duty another mundane job listen very carefully to the statement in your mundane god is doing the miraculous in your mundane god is doing the miraculous some may be visible in the moment some will be understood much later always say lord transform my will so that it is not my will that is done let your will be done jesus is our best example treasure the word of god think of the ways of god trust in the wisdom of god transform to the will of god and finally beautifully tell of the wonders of god tell of the wonders of god i wonder what the testimony of this jailer would have been the bible says in acts 16 that very night no delay no delay whatsoever look at me let me read for you acts 16 verses 33 onwards and he took the same took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and immediately he and all his family were baptized now when he had brought them into his house he set foot before them and he rejoiced having believed in god with all his household now what is he doing i am guessing you would have listened what is that song you sang paul i want to learn that song was it amazing grace okay i'm going to learn amazing grace i wonder what song paul was singing but not amazing grace tell of all his wonders today we speak many words words of complain words of grumble words of gossip vain words we talk about things we have no idea about i remember in march and april when this a pandemic was just beginning to you know uh, 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 be visible to us there were so many news floating around this is only a flu this is nothing nothing will happen there were good news bad news worse news all kinds of news and whatsapp is a great way where everybody seems to be an expert i have learned when things come i'll read it close it don't forward unless it is something worthy uplifting 
especially if it is biblical but any other news not worth it at all i would rather tell of his wonders you are one step away from glorifying god in your life one step away let me close with one example and two verses when jesus was hanging on the cross there were two other criminals one spoke about the wonderful person of jesus and he said when you come in your kingdom remember me to that man jesus said today you will be with me in paradise one step away from eternal greatness on the other side the other criminal spoke blaspheming words mocking words he was one step away from eternal darkness let me give you two verses as i close psalm 118 verse 1 Psalm 118 and verse 1 O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever give thanks to the Lord for he is good Exodus chapter 15 verses 6 to 11 a beautiful song Exodus chapter 15 verses 6 to 11 this is after God had redeemed the people of Israel from the clutches of the Egyptians listen very carefully Exodus 15 verses 6 to 11 your right hand o lord has become glorious in power your right hand o lord has dashed the enemy in pieces and in the greatness of your excellence you have overthrown those who rose against you you sent forth your wrath it consumed them like stubble and with the blast of your nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood upright like a heap the depths congealed in the heart of the sea the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my desire shall be satisfied on them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them you blew with your wind the sea covered them they sank like lead in the mighty waters who is like you o lord among the gods who is like you glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing wonders who is like unto thee you are one step away from declaring the greatness of this great god hasn't he done wonders in your life why keep quiet in your family prayer sit and talk about the goodness of god yes things could be better but always no things could be worse are you going to grumble or are you going to be grateful there are always reasons in life to grumble you can search and find them and wallow in them or you can be grateful for what god has done it will only uplift your spirit your one step matters let me close with these three lines every step matters every day matters every life matters every step that you take matters every day you live matters every life on earth matters the fool will turn away from god the wise will turn to god this person he was one step away from having an ordinary life he turned to god he and his family rejoiced greatly what would be your next step what would be your next step treasure the word of god think of the ways of god trust in the wisdom of god transform yourself to the will of god tell of the wonders of god would you close your eyes and let us pray
gracious loving God we thank you we praise you that my God in all your grandeur and splendor have chosen to reveal yourselves in ways which we can understand we are fragile weak vulnerable needy and we come to you for grace we are one step away from throwing away our life instead we throw ourselves at your feet we don't want to harden our hearts we want to humble our hearts we don't want to be hopeless we come to the foot of the cross and we find in jesus there is great hope continue to do your good work in our lives lord may our every step every day be lived carefully committed to christ jesus we love you we praise you in jesus name we pray amen I now request Mrs Irene Rogers to lead us in the intercessory prayer. Let us pray. Our loving heavenly Father, we thank you for this time where we could come to your throne of grace with our praises, thanksgiving and petitions as we intercede on behalf of others. We are incredibly in need of your power and strength. We ask that you would fill us with your spirit of love and unity among believers around the world. We ask for your help to set aside our differences and look to the greater cause, the cause of Christ. Please help us to live a life of love. We need your love to stir our hearts and give direction to our days. We need your wisdom to guide us. We need your spirit to lead us to live godly lives that will bring honor to you. We thank you that you are always with us and give us great purpose and hope. Help us to be faithful to carry one another's burdens remembering that we're in this life together thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness you are still with us that your word says you are close to the broken hearted and save those who are crushed in spirit that our greatest source of help and strength comes from you that though we face trouble and loss in this life we can be assured that you have overcome it all we ask for great miracles for this hurting world and for the comfort of your spirit to bring a covering of grace and healing to all those who have been broken we thank you that you are jehovah jireh the god who provides we thank you that you know our needs before we even ask you are aware of all that concerns us and you have a plan and a purpose you alone can move mountains to make a way for your children We ask for your answer in your timing for every need that weighs our hearts down. Forgive us for being too busy or, or distracted by other things, for not fully recognizing what you have freely given and done for us. May we share this light of hope that so burns within our hearts. Lord, we pray for the ongoing pandemic. We pray for your healing touch upon every person affected by COVID-19 and comfort every family that has lost a loved one. We remember the frontline workers, the medical fraternity, cops, and others who are working tirelessly during this time. Continue to give them your protection, Lord. We pray for people working on the vaccine. Grant them your wisdom and knowledge. Father, we pray for the various issues that our world is facing today. We pray for the Indochina conflict, the economic crisis, job crisis, and for natural disasters and calamities that have affected so many lives around the world we pray that you would guide and protect your children father we pray for the leaders of the world and the leaders of our nation we commit our prime minister chief ministers members of the cabinet and all others in authority into your loving hands we pray that you would grant them wisdom and discernment that we may solve our problems effectively and enhance the well-being of our nation 
We pray for peace and harmony within our nation and between other nations. Lord, we pray for the sick, the poor, and the needy. We pray for the people suffering from various illnesses. We remember the oppressed, the neglected, people who suffer from anxiety and depression. We pray that your comforting hand would be upon them. Deliver them from their weaknesses, Lord. Open our hearts and minds so that we can help one another. We pray for our pastor, Reverend Isaac Johnson, Assistant Pastor, Pastor Paul Anbarasu, the elders of our church and Church Universal. We remember the missionary workers, evangelists, and every individual who's trying to spread your word in the remote places. Give them your wisdom and discernment as they lead. We ask that you would continue to shepherd them and give them your peace. Surround each one of them with wise counsel, that they would be humble and kind, patient and loving through their actions and words. We pray that their faith in you would be unwavering. We pray for their families, Lord. Give them good health, protection, and grace for the days ahead. We thank you for the gift of the church, a community of your children that you have gathered together to worship, serve, pray, and love. May your church be like a city on a hill, shining your light into the darkness of the world. May we work together as members of one body, using the gifts and abilities you have given us to faithfully love and serve one another. We pray and thank you for the online services, Sunday school classes, Zoom sessions, and the youth. We pray for everyone who helps out with the creativity and production in bringing and making your word accessible to us from the comfort of our homes. We pray that many would be blessed in and through it. We pray especially for our office staff, gardeners, watchmen, and everyone involved in the day-to-day -day activities of our church. Give them good health and strength. Protect and bless their families. Lord, we pray for the various projects of our church. We pray that you would use us as your vessels and guide us to do your will. We pray for the Thanksgiving event next month. We pray that we would give willingly and generously. We commit everyone who will be helping out with the distribution. Give them your protection, Lord. Father, we pray for our families. We thank you that you are the light of the word and the guidance in our lives. We pray for the school children and college students. We pray for wisdom, knowledge, safety, and direction for their future. We pray for all those working from home. Bless them and keep them in good health. Lord, give us the strength to, li to live as ambassadors for you in this world. Turn your face towards us and give us peace. Help us to live and love together, bringing glory to your name. May the word of Christ continue to dwell in our hearts. May we do everything in word or deed in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's continue to worship God as we declare the name of the Lord as we sing our final hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Jesus' name, let it be. 
What a blessed service we have had. What a glorious song. All hail the power of Jesus' name. The name above every other name. As I often say, the service may come to the end. But remember, your walk with Jesus always continues. Let me pray for you. Whatever your personal needs are, would you say, Lord Jesus, here I am. And I trust that you will provide. Remember, God of Abraham is our God. If he can provide a ram on a deserted mountain, he can provide your need in his time, in his way, for his glory. Look to God, call upon him, and he will answer you. Would you close your eyes? Let us look to God in prayer. Gracious, loving God, we thank and praise you for this joyous morning. We thank you, Lord, for all your goodness. The privilege of worshipping you. The privilege, O oh Lord, to worship even when we are unable to come to the physical building. Truly, Lord, church is not a building. We are the church. The Holy Spirit who resides in us makes us one family in Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to lead us. Lord, as I pray right now for every person watching, I pray especially for those calling upon you in their specific hour of need, whatever their challenges, whatever, O oh Lord, their needs are, we pray that you will meet them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will provide for them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will sustain and strengthen them, O oh Lord. Wipe their tears, lift them from the miry clay, and set them on a rock, O oh Lord. Without you, we don't have anybody else. But when you are with us, we are more than conquerors. We seek your blessing even now, Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.